So how do we go about predicting the centroid? So we looked at um, how you go about predicting the centroid for uh, regular forms. So that's fairly straightforward. But the three principal ways we can go about predicting where the centroid position of an object is likely to be, or the center of mass. So we can use um, simple experiments to you know, identify the centroid position, particularly for irregular forms or shapes. We can also use computer-aided analysis. So um, with your CAD software, you'll normally have a tool that can identify where um, the central position of a product likes to be in terms of, you know, um, single parts or, you know, multiple parted um, assemblies. So you've got that too. And we can also use numerical methods. So we're going to be looking at numerical methods in a bit more detail down the line. So let's look at using, but the experiment is fairly simple. So let's look at this uh, laminar or 2D form. So all that we have to do is we pin uh, a position, a defined position. So typically one corner, and you can label that corner A or one or two, it's more or less up to you. And you allow the shape to oscillate until it comes to rest. Once it comes to rest, you then place a some form of loader string. So it could be a, a, a plumb bob, um, ideally, but you know a waiter string, and you then trace along the string to give you one of the bisectors that will help you establish or define where the central position like to be. You unpin the shape from A, and you identify any other corner. So it could be that corner that corner, that corner. So whether it's opposite or adjacent, it doesn't really matter. You pin and you effect the same concept again by letting the system, the shape oscillate until it comes to rest. Then you then attach a loaded string or weighted string and you then trace along the string to intersect with the first bisector. Where the two lines intersect, that defines the central position. And there you go. So the coordination of the central position depends on where you've placed your reference frame to measure the distance of the centroid in terms of its x coordinate and in terms of its y coordinate. So fairly straightforward stuff. Using computer aided analysis. So this is where CAD becomes pretty useful. So I've got a screenshot of um, SOLIDWORKS, so this is I think an old version of SOLIDWORKS, but the concept and the algorithm is more or less the same. So um, to enable you to identify uh, the central position of your CAD model, what you have to do is you go into tools I believe and you look for um, in the menu, um, drop down menu, you look for um, the evaluate tab. You click on the evaluate tab and you get this dialog uh, menu. So this will normally be the mass property dialog menu, and that will tell you what this where the centroid location is in terms of its coordinates. So what will be the x coordinate in terms of where the central position is likely to be, the y and the x. So you can have a go yourself in doing that. So this is an enlarged shot of that. So here you've got the center of mass and it tells you what the central position is for this given assembly for a motor. And there you go. So over time, you guys become quite familiar with this tool. And again, the central position is dependent on whether the assembly is defined in terms of the material constitution. If you just defined by the shape, then it will give you some form of reading. But if you want to have a very accurate reading, you need to ensure that the materials that constitutes the um, product are clearly defined in your CAD model to get better accuracy.
Right, so this brings us to predicting the central position using numerical methods. So to do that, we use these formulas as shown here. So you've got to determine the x-axis. So remember what I've been, you know, uh, professing throughout um, this lecture presentation. That to identify the central position is done in terms of coordination. So what would be the x-coordinate, what would be the y-coordinate, similar to what you guys do when it comes to um, plotting graphs. So in terms of x, to work out the x-coordinate for a given um, form, that will be equal to some variable called qx, so q in terms of x, divided by at. So at is essentially the total area of the object. But when it comes to q, q defines a property known as the first moment of area. So if we're looking at how an object's been uh, decomposed and we're assuming that the masses or the forms that forms the entire shape are individual um, elements, then the centroid for one element with respect to where its neutral axis is likely to be, that defines the moment or what's called the first moment respect to a um, missed area. So that's defined by this integral here. So the first moment of area respect to x is equal to the integral of xi. So xi is essentially the central position of one element within um, the product in terms of the distance of the centroid to the um, neutral axis of the of object and dA is essentially, you know, that the area of that element that constitutes um, the form. And that's essentially what um, Q represents. So Q is simply the first moment of um, an element, so the total um, of that divided by the total area, which is defined here. So that's why you've got integral, so integral is more or less the sum of all the elements that constitutes um, the total area of the form. And it's the same for um, y. So instead of working out um, the first moment in terms of x, this time we look at it in terms of y. Thus this equation here. So the first moment in terms of y will be equal to the total sum or the integral of all the individual central positions of each element times the area of its element or its corresponding element and that's essentially what that is and these concepts have been used to um, calculate and predict what um, the centroid uh, formulas are likely to be for standard forms or regular forms so as i stated equations this is how these standard formulas were more or less established for common shapes and form. So you don't necessarily need to use first principles in establishing um, what the equations for coordination is likely to be. We don't necessarily need that. All you have to do is just to use any reliable um, source to um, define what the likely uh, formulas would be in working out the central position. So we're not expecting you to use uh, first principles in doing that. These are standard formulas that you can find in any good uh, solid mechanics or mechanics or materials textbook. Okay, and you could even probably get you know a PDF copy from the internet. So there you go. So these are um, examples of um, common shapes. And again, this is not um, an exhausted list. Okay, it goes beyond that depending on the form. So one of the things we're expecting you guys to do when it comes to um, the final piece of work relating to CW1 is to use your initiative to do some research to identify what will be the ideal formulas to enable you work out the centroid of a given form, depending on how you've gone about decomposing that form. So I'll bear that in mind. So I've given you some examples here. So you've got a rectangle. So to define um, the X coordinate, that'll be equal to half the length. And in terms of Y, that'll be half the width. And the area is fairly straightforward. The length times the width. So again, from reliable um, sources, you always have you know, the area given 
if it's more of a 3D form, then the formula for the volume will also be given. But what's important is more or less the central coordinate. One thing I need to you need to bear in mind is this. These coordinates is dependent on where you're measuring the coordinates from. So in this particular example, it's assumed that the neutral, um, the reference point or the reference axis is somewhere about the corners. It could be here, there, there or there. But again, dependent on the sense. So if you're moving upwards, then you have more of a positive uh, coordination. If you're moving down, then you have more of a negative coordination in terms of y. So you do need to really think about this in terms of defining the coordinates based on where the reference um, axis has been given. So please bear that in mind. Okay. Again, you've got a scalene triangle. So it's for this scalene triangle, um, for the x coordinate, that is the base divided by 2, and y, h divided by 3. And again, we're assuming that the coordinate is here. Okay. So you need to um, be very careful in terms of how you use these formulas. And the area is half base times height. So I think that's uh, fairly straightforward. So these are examples. So, you know, um, peruse and apply where appropriate. So as I stated, all these formulas are defined in terms of where the reference axis is defined in any given problem. So please bear this in mind.